So we're all familiar now with Democrats' pathological hypocrisy when it comes to personal behaviour. Do as I say, not as I do. Rules for thee, not for me. French laundry, Pelosi at the hair salon, flying around the world on private jets to preach about climate. And we had another episode of Nancy Antoinette when she attended and officiated the lavish wedding of a billionaire oil heiress in San Francisco, indoors and maskless, of course. So while they rant and rave about the billionaires and poverty and inequality, they're out there yucking it up with them, hustling political donations and trading favours. And they suddenly seem to hate fossil fuels a lot less when they're out hobnobbing with oil tycoons. And while they force our children to have their faces covered for eight hours a day in school, despite all scientific evidence suggesting it's completely unnecessary, of course they don't do it themselves. But actually, there's a deeper version of the same phenomenon, and it's more important because it's not just laughable and ludicrous in terms of high-profile Democrats on a personal level. It's about policy that affects millions of Americans. We made this point last summer in response to the George Floyd and BLM upheavals. We showed you that for all their endless lectures on racial justice and systemic racism and how racist Republicans are, if you look at the facts and the data on racial injustice on everything from schools to policing to housing, the absolute worst places in America for black people are the places run by Democrats. And now a broader version of that exact argument has been made at length in, of all places, the New York Times, in an amazing video opinion piece entitled Blue States Are the Problem. Here's a short excerpt. Blue states are where the housing crisis is located. Blue states are where the disparities in education funding are the most dramatic. Blue states are the places where tens of thousands of homeless people are living on the streets. Blue states are the places where economic inequality is increasing most quickly in this country. Affluent liberals tend to be really good at showing up to the marches and talking about how they love equality. They're really good at putting signs in their lawn saying that all are welcome here. But by their actions, what they're actually saying is, yes, we believe in these ideals, just not in my backyard. Brilliant. Isn't that just exactly right? They run around virtue signaling on justice and equity and all the rest of it, narcissistically self-basted in self-righteousness and sanctimony, while presiding over actual real-world outcomes that are the complete opposite of what they say they stand for. Everywhere and every time today's Democrats take power, they make poverty worse, inequality worse, they hurt black people and Latinos, they create humanitarian crises, whether it's at the border or in Afghanistan or on the streets of our major cities. They're the ones who are inhumane. They're the ones who are cruel and heartless. They're the ones hurting the poorest and most vulnerable. And now we have it from the New York Times itself. Blue states are the problem. Joining me now with reaction is California Rebel-based podcast co-host Kristen Garcia-Dumont, a blue state resident just like me. How about that, Kristen? Blue states are the problem. Do you ever think you'd see that in the New York Times? It's totally stunning, but hopefully the message will now get through. It's just so absolutely cruel. So we talk about the hypocrisy, but it really verges on hatred, like the contempt for the working person in these blue states yes. is so palpable. It's so obvious everywhere. I was just in San Francisco yesterday, and it's so tragic what has happened to is such a rich, robust, and beautiful city. It used to be the heart of innovation, a cultural heartbeat for our country. And you literally step over homeless people everywhere you walk. We have open-air drug markets, and these progressive policies have done nothing but fuel crime, worst homelessness. These people were aiding and abetting their death by giving them truly the weapons of destruction so that we can aid their disease and their drug abuse. And we do it all in the name of we're so kind and we're so humane, and it's absolute yeah. nonsense. The, the results are completely in our face that we failed. It's so shameless the way that despite the record, and it's not just California, every, like that's why th this piece was so interesting, is all the blue states where they have total control, where they have the, you know, they, they run the executive branch of the governor or mayors, um, the state legislature. And yet, despite the results, they still sort of think of themselves as compassionate. That's what's amazing, the sort of utter shamelessness of it. That's absolutely right. It's like it's living a complete and total lie. 
It's, it's literally just the minimal amount of effort of I put out a sign, I put up a black square on my Instagram page, I get to then yes. go to my lavish dinner parties and tell everybody I'm just so woke and fabulous. And everything I stand for as a liberal in California is actually destroying the very people that I listed on that sign that I said I was protesting for with the black square. What are you doing for minorities in these blue states? You're devastating their businesses. You're devastating their communities with out of control crime and homelessness. These policies just on their face are a failure. And so to have the New York Times finally call a spade a spade, I'm stunned, but we actually need to now say, okay, now we need to change. We've admitted we have a problem. Exactly. This is not working, and we need to actually change these policies because they're hurting the people that we purport to help. Well, the interesting thing is, I don't know if they'll change the policies, but what we need to do is change the leadership and change the political control of these places. And what's interesting is that that does seem to be happening. We had a fantastic conversation, didn't we, just the other day on the podcast with someone who's been broadcasting um, to the uh, as a conservative Latino. It's the only, only show on Univision that was a conservative commentary show taken off the air explaining how the Latino community in, in California and across the country just moving in droves to the Republicans because they, they know what's happening. They can see the reality. So I think that's where we should, uh, that's where we should be optimistic. Anyway, Kristen, great to see you as always. If you want to see more of Kristen, make sure you check out uh, the podcast, California Rebel Base, and we'll be back straight after this.